What is thy business with these thrones? Thy kind are all of a piece. Pillagers, emboldened by the flame of ambition. Have it writ upon thy meager grave. Felt thy king, Morgoth. Last of all kings. Ah, Morgoth. The true king of Elden Ring. Reduced to 50 separate resin pieces and stuffed into some Tupperware. How the mighty fall. Not to worry, let's get you lined up, old buddy. We're gonna take these 50 printed pieces and get him released from these resin support shackles and start piecing together the ruler of Laindell. So let's get 60 seconds on the clock to start building and law building. Though Morgoth was born of royal lineage to Queen Marika and Godfrey, he and his twin brother Moe were both born as accursed omen children and were therefore exiled to the subterranean shunning grounds below the capital. Whilst Moog went off to begin his new dynasty after kidnapping Mikola, Morgoth remained and vowed to protect the Erd Tree. Then after assuming the name of Margit, he ventured out into the lands, killing anyone who would attempt to approach the Erdtree in hopes of becoming Elden Lord. That is, until you defeat Margit and find the true self Morgoth at the entrance of the Erdtree. And we get that epic scene where he smashes the wooden casing around his sword that sealed away the accursed blood within. And that's 60 seconds up. Before painting, we just need to prime him black. So let's get some white ink in the airbrush to create an epic zenithal highlight on our Omen King. Keeping the angle high up and pointed down will create that beautiful contrast lighting to get us ready for painting. It's a beautiful thing, highlighting with ink, it makes it look so moody and makes me feel like I know what I'm doing. Now we can base the skin and we'll do it with some Catacan Flesh and Agrax Earthshade. Starting off with the brown acrylic, we can just begin basing the skin and can get it all nice and coated up. Getting all his hands, horns, pears and his hot dogs done. Hey, for gripper picks, you've got to subscribe to the Omen fans, okay? You don't get the dogs for free out here. Then once dry... <laughs> Then once dried, slap a wash of Earthshade over the brown coat to get some grimy contrast on it. And a good slapping of Zandri dust will be a good base colour for the tattered cloak. And keeping it thin, you should still keep some of the shading underneath. It's not essential, but I find it helps when I'm mapping out the shadows later on. Now there's a lot of cloak here, and sometimes I wonder if it's easier to just airbrush the whole lot before piecing it together, but learning from mistakes is for dorks. <laughs> Mechanicus Standard Grey will be good for some bonnet bashing. So just getting these lovely luscious locks of luck painted up with our great good golly gosh grey. And Rakarth Flesh will be good to highlight the skin, I reckon. So just tickling on some highlights onto the skin, just to areas where the most light would hit. Surface areas facing upwards and the bits that are poking out the most, you know, I'm not the best at mapping out light, but it makes me feel like a fancy artist doing it. Back to the cloak and we'll smash some Agrax Earthshade over it to once again get some grimy contrast on. You could probably achieve the same effect with brown and black washes as these Citadel washes are quite expensive, especially when using it in large surface areas, but I don't use this stuff that often, so it's good to get some mileage out of it. And once the earth shite <coughs> And once the earth shade has dried, we'll whack some Ashapti bone on as highlights and Catacan flesh as shadows for our cloak. I'm 
I'm deciding to keep the tones quite similar to each other so our overall colour palette is quite muted and earthy and hopefully will all work together quite nicely on the final product. Same thing as painting the skin, just targeting those areas most exposed to a light source with our lighter bone colour and then hitting the covered areas, creases and folds in the cloak with a darker brown and just wet blending between the tones to get a smoother transition. Over the top of both those tones on the cloak, we'll be punching on some extreme highlights with some off-white wraith bone. Then doing the same as before with the highlights and targeting small areas, we'll beef up these highlights and get them really popping. This off-white colour will also be handy to add the same bright highlights to the skin as well. Now we can add some extra dry brushing of brown tones to the horns and to the tail, starting off with the mid-tone Mornfang Brown and just dry brushing it lightly on the horns. The texture of the horns lend nicely to dry brushing and we can just do nice light little strokes to just get as little paint off as possible. Then the same to the tail as well. Once done with the brown, we can move up to the Zandri Dust tone just to get those extra highlights in and do the exact same method. On the grey hair, we can whap some brighter grey tones on for highlights with the Celestra Grey. And with some saucy streaky strokes, we can get some mid-2000s boy band highlights added to Morgoth's sweet centre parting curtains. And I'll probably do the same highlighting for both his mutton chops and the hairs across his arms and his legs. Now for the final piece onto the sword, we'll base the handle with some metallic paint. And for the final exciting part, I'll be using these colour shift paints from Green Stuff World. I've never used these before, but his swords seem the perfect excuse to try them out. I saw them on Instagram, they look really cool. They have that kind of chameleon metallic tone shift effect that you see on like fancy Lamborghinis that change color under certain lights. And his sword has those kind of crazy warping colors that bleed into each other. So hopefully after mixing loads of these different colors together on it, we will hopefully get a pretty cool looking effect. Now I would say that this sword now has more of a similar look to Astel's crazy cosmos style than the cursed sword, but it's still a pretty cool effect. I don't really know what else I'm going to use this colour shift paint for, I don't really have anything lined up, but maybe when I do more cosmic crazies in Elden Ring and Bloodborne, I'll get more use out of them, I don't know. But there we are, there's our Omen King. All that's left to do is get him on the base that I painted earlier. And look at that, super wobbly and unstable. Perfect. The base didn't print straight as warping is something that can occur in resin printing so maybe I'll just make him his own handmade base another day but hey we'll leave him in this wobbly state so that we can get those ending beauty shots but before then I want to thank you all for joining me again this week if you did enjoy today's episode be sure to punch that like button leave a wizened finger message below and hit subscribe if you haven't already and now it's time for a couple cinematic beauty shots see you next time ambitions to rest. The throne, stained by my curse. Such shame I cannot bear. Thy part in this shall not be forgiven. May the curse seep to thy very
None may claim the title of Elden Lord. 